important reasons why all eyes are on Nevada right now is because unlike Iowa and unlike New Hampshire, we offer a more diverse constituency. So we're going to see how these candidates fare, not necessarily with a majority white electorate, which is here, but also with greater levels such as the Latino vote, which can make up almost 30 percent of the populace here. How candidates fare with African Americans, our growing Asian population. So these demographics matter, and we're going to see candidates that are really looking to be able to pick up steam with the diverse demographics here and they, that they haven't been able to gain in Iowa and New Hampshire. And we have seen some attempts at relatability to, to, the, to some of the communities that really haven't been addressed so far. What are you seeing in terms of how they're reacting to this, the Latino community and the African American community? Well, the minority community here is really paying attention to what's going on because the reality is if you are a Democrat in our country today, you cannot rely on simply white voters to get you into office. So you have the Latino constituency, you have the African American voters who are really looking to their issues, looking to economic issues such as jobs, wages, and the economy. How can you speak to these issues to gain these voters to help you win office? And so how would you rate voter priorities in this election versus what they were concerned about four years ago? Well, this is the tricky thing about this particular election. You have some voters who their priority is focused on policies, what will be best for their life. But you have other voters who aren't necessarily focused on policy, but they're focused on getting the current president out of office. And we haven't really seen a candidate that we can say can bring the best of both worlds. We have candidates who are very attractive in terms of policy, but then the question becomes, well, if this person becomes the nominee, can they really beat Trump? And that's really what voters voters are struggling with. I may like your policy, but can you win the election? And that really depends for each voter which is more important, the policy or getting the current president out of office. And it also certainly depends on how people feel about their economic status. So talk about some of the key industries in the state that are really driving growth there. So uh, when we talk about Nevada, Nevada is largely known as a tourism, gaming, and hospitality state. That's our main industry. But also we are a hub for logistics. We are a hub for manufacturing. So we have companies such as Panasonic. We have the Gigafactory for Tesla where the batteries are made. We have different industries that are here, and we actually use, particularly in the north, Nevada as a hub to get their goods in and out and ship to various places. So it's not just about tourism and gaming. We have a wealth of industries here that really contribute to the mainstays of our economy. And what about unions? How important do you see their role in this particular contest? Well, unions are very important. Our strongest union that we have here is the Culinary Union, which has about 60,000 members. And one of the challenges that we see Bernie Sanders facing in our state is the fact that the Culinary Union, one, has not endorsed a particular candidate, but they have come out and said that they are against Medicare for all. They are against that particular really steadfast point of Bernie Sanders' platform. And one of the things that we see is that Bernie Sanders is sticking hard and fast to Medicare for all, and we have to wonder, is he sticking hard and fast because he believes that he will win over groups here in Nevada, such as the Culinary Union, or is he sticking to his message of Medicare for all because he's decided that though he may lose votes in Nevada, it will benefit him on a national scale. But the unions are very important. We are going to see tomorrow exactly how everything shakes out. The fact that we had so many people engage in early caucusing and we're anticipating large numbers tomorrow, we'll see whether or not the union was actually able to sway their members to vote for or against a particular candidate. So then as we look at some of the demographics that were covered in the previous caucuses and as well as the debacle that we saw with the, with the results in Iowa, could we see any sort of changes in terms of the future of the caucus format or the types of states that are included? Well, I definitely think that all eyes are on Nevada to see just how seamlessly we can pull this caucus off. Um, there were issues with early voting with the fact that it was taking individuals two to three hours to participate. There's issues with some of the ballots being invalidated, so those individuals will have to show up tomorrow if they can. And the bottom line is this. If Nevada faces the same issues that happened in Iowa, the chances of us continuing with the caucus system will significantly decrease. 
decrease. There's already a lack of clarity. People just don't understand in Nevada how the caucus system works. And that coupled with having issues with counting the vote, counting the ballots, getting the votes out, really could spell the end of the caucus in Nevada.